Sir, I think before we left, you stated that you wouldn't you wouldn't have dealt with a high risk suspect yourself. Is that right? No, sir. Not at all. No, sir. Okay. Uh, would you consider a carjacking suspect a high risk suspect? Yes. Sir. Was I labeled as a carjacking suspect on March 22nd, 2011, sir? Best my knowledge, yes, sir. You were. Okay. You also stated that you would have called, you, that you would have called central medication a backup with you if you deal with a high risk suspect. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Kitchen. Am I not saying that right? Kitchen? Johnson. Mr. Johnson, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Johnson. Um, did you know the Ashley Clark County Police Department high risk trap stop protocol? On the highest traffic stop, yes, sir. Could you explain it to the jury, please, sir? Uh, once a vehicle is identified as possibly containing a a, um, a high risk individual, um, we would initiate the traffic stop. Um, officer was the initiating officer would stand by till all the officers arrived on the scene um, and. While doing so, we would just call in and uh, give a confirm the description of the car, the tag, and, and the occupants of the car. Uh, and then we would proceed once appropriate officers were there on the scene. We would uh, have individuals um, come out of the car, um, condition off, uh, keys out of the window. Driver first, having that subject, um, clear weapons, we have them raise their hands or shirt, make sure there's nothing there. We have the individual come back to the to a uh, waiting officer who will take that subject into custody and then we will clear the car, depending upon how many individuals are in the car. Um, then we will do a secondary search of the car once all individuals are out. And then we'll do a clear trunk and make sure nothing, nothing is in the trunk. Okay, sir. Would you, is it proper protocol to radio central communication if you stop a high risk traffic stop? Are you doing that? Yes, sir. Could you tell the jury about the central communication part of it? Well, again, we would call into the central communications about the vehicle, confirming that this is the vehicle we, that we were looking for and that was Bolo, if there is a Bolo. Um, confirm a tag, uh, make model, color, things of that nature. 
would you would you wear your for backup during a high risk traffic stop? I would, but if it's all the way out to the other officers, that that is the vehicle, then the officers will start arriving to your location. Um, but we will request the officers to come help you out. You will not do a felony traffic stop alone. How about parking a vehicle? Isn't it true that if you perform a felony traffic stop that you have to place your engine block between the officer and the suspect vehicle? Yes, sir. Could you explain that procedure to the jury, please, sir? Um, typically, we're trained in the academy to position your vehicle on a traffic stop with the engine block blocking you and that and that uh, that vehicle uh, as a means of cover. Um, most uh, uh, rounds from a firearm won't penetrate the block of an engine, so that's that's the proper cover you have. You do that to for the safety of yourself and the safety of other citizens and anybody that might be around. Isn't that correct, sir? Yes. Sir. Okay. You say you know there's a police car behind you when you pull it on Cascade on the River Apartment Complex on Sigmore Drive, correct? Yes, sir. When I turned on Sigmore, I saw a patrol car coming up behind me from westbound direction across by uh, Lena Highway. You and Tony Howard stopped and talked to each other while y'all was in the Cascade on the River Apartment Complex. Are we correct, sir? Yes, sir. What y'all talking about, sir? Uh, again, to make a model of call we were, we were looking for. Um, also, uh, Howard mentioned that he was uh, going to be en route to the east side, I believe, uh, as talking to uh, individuals from the drug unit about uh, possible ID and somebody. Okay. Your Honor, if I may, I would like to show <laughs> Mr. Kissing here some exhibits on the demo, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Coming down Sigma Drive, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, once you got to Sigma Drive, did you come to this entrance or Cascade? Did you go to the bottom entrance first? I came to the first entrance. Okay, and what you do when you got here? I turned in and drove, started driving around the backside of the of the complex. So this little red thing on your this shoe is 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 it? Yes. Sir. Okay. What do you see on the highway there during this time? If you were bringing the corner back toward the back of the apartment complex, I was out camping on the opposite side, um, and we were behind the apartment buildings in the actual U-shape. i tell you what, maybe could you hand in this and let it explain to us, please, make it easier for you, sir. Sigmore Drive, I came into this entrance here, sir. Mm -hmm. um, back here, this area here is where Austin Howard and I met up for the first time. Okay. This is the point y'all started right talking? Yes, sir. We had a conversation the first time, yes, sir. Okay. Well, y'all thought it were, which way did you go and which way did Austin Howard go? Again, I'm coming here. Mm -hmm. Austin Howard came from. This direction. Okay. We're coming from opposite directions. What? What did? Show us. Show us what Officer Howard did. Can you show us? You think you know your knowledge of what he did? Show us what Officer Howard did. Well, we just parked next to each other. Um, he was in his patrol car. Um, I was in mine. 
We never exited the car at that point. We was just talking about the make and model of the of the Cadillac DeVille we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and again, he talked about um, leaving here, heading back over towards East to talk to the drug unit about ID and something. So he was talking about going east, going to the road. Going to the east side substation. Okay. I'm sorry, far, pardon me, east side, uh, East PD. Show us what you did after you got finished talking to us. Show us what you did with the layers. <clears throat> Again, sir, when we parted ways, I went this way. Okay. Back out. Mm -hmm. Officer Howard, he went back out that way. That was the initial directions we left. Okay, now show us the, when you left out, show us what you did with the lady. When you left out, show us what you did with that lady when you left out. I came around the circle. Okay. Got about right there. Okay. Show us what you did after that. After that? Yes, sir. Uh, I was highway and made it out on the street. Okay. I'm exiting here now. Okay. And we met up for the second time right there. Okay. Right in the area there. Now, when you met Officer Howard in that street right there, did you see a white male in a car right there? No, sir. You didn't see nobody in no car right there, what you tell the dealer? No, sir, I didn't. Did you see a red SUV at that time? I did not see the red SUV at that time, sir, no. So, put the light back on when y'all stopped there and talk for a second time. I'm heading this way. I was high, I was coming back that way. Okay, just stop. Sure, we all talked at the second time. What point is it? Right in there. So you're leaving out of Cascade, that we all talking about. Yes, sir. So you see no red, red SUV, no white male sitting right there on sitting on drive in the car? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. No, sir, I did not see a white male or a red SUV okay, at that time. If you had saw a white, white male sitting right there on sitting on drive, when you agreed that you would have saw him? If I would have saw him, yes, sir, I would have, well, I would have tell you, yes, sir. Okay, now, when you come out of Cascade and talk to Officer, I mean, Officer uh, Powell right there, mm -hmm. Did you see Officer, Officer Christian sitting right there on Sycamore Drive? Did you see him sitting up? No, sir. Now I'm at you, sir. Uh, Mr. Johnson, mm -hmm. have you ever made any type of reports, any statements about Officer Christian sitting right there on Sycamore Drive waiting on ship check? Not my knowledge, no, sir. Again, I. Did not see him on that street at all. Did not know he was there. I understand, sir. You did not have, did you know, did you do a supplement report on this case? I did. Okay. Did you do a victim impact report on this case? I did. Now, I'd like to ask you this. Do you recall making a statement in your victim impact about all the prison just sitting right there? Wait no ship change in the middle of that road. In my statement, yes, sir. Why did you do that? And you just told the jury he was sitting there. I told the jury I did not see him sitting there. Okay, I understand, that, sir. But why did you put in your victim impact statement that all the prison just sitting there and you told the family they just sitting there waiting on ship to check? Why did you do that? Well, in my statement, I wrote how I felt at the time. Let me stop you yeah. just a moment. I'm not sure what statement you're talking about, but I'm not sure that it's now the appropriate time to talk about oh, it. Okay. okay. Now, if we need to send the jury out and discuss it, we can. Yeah, we can do that. Let me ask the jury to go to the jury. Lights, please. to the statements that uh, for the uh, sentencing phase for the clinics, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's what I with. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know where, where you're going, but I don't, I don't know that I'm going to allow it. Well, 
I don't know that it's appropriate for that to go to to come out now. Okay. And I, I don't know. I wasn't sure that that's where you can go. And I mean, I'm going to hear from Mr. Mall, but I didn't know if there was another state for this reason. I'm okay, sorry. well, I would tell you where I was going. Well, don't do that. Don't do that, Judge. Mr. Mall. Well, Judge, I, I think it's probably a little bit confusing. The jury doesn't know what a victim impact statement is right. and what the purpose of that is. And I think he may be misconstruing the statement and what Officer Johnson, what he actually saw on that day, and, and what he may be saying in his victim impact statement about the effect on him and the community by Officer Christian's death and what he's going on. That doesn't mean that he didn't, he actually saw Officer Christian on that day. I don't have a victim impact statement in front of me to know the exact word. Well, what I do, see, what I do, Judge, is I just, I know you can't agree with me, but I study real hard. So when a witness come up here and say something, is that true? See, look, just say, if this is my thing. Now, what, what, what disturbed me is just say they had to convict me, and I'm at the sentence page. He going to come in here and tell us, say something like true. Because if you simply say it right now, he was simply parked on the side of the road, waiting for the shield to change it in, or a dead car. That very disturbing to me, because just saying they convict me, this let me know he was going to come in and get on his victim impact statement. Oh, he was just parked on the road right there, waiting on this shield to end, with just one of those ugly lies I stated by. And he just testified unequivocally that Officer Christian went right there. And they, and they had it in the newspaper, and his family had heard this whole mess, and everything they said. They was in the coat the 27th, they heard this mess. And it, that's, that's what I'm here for, the truth. Don't come here telling no lies, because I ain't going for it. I'm not sure it's, it's important that I hear the motive for why you want to ask the question. Yeah, but I want you to know why. I don't, I'm hearing you, but I don't know that that has anything to do with what, with what we do next as to why you're doing it. The question is, I believe Mr. Mullen is correct in that it's confusing to the jury because you're talking about supplemental statements and all of that. Are you going to ask that that be admitted in, uh, into evidence now? Are you going to? No, I, I was just going to ask him a question about it because it just was just part. I mean, I didn't want to talk about the whole thing. My thing is, this is my thing, Judge. If you make a statement, that's part of the record. Okay? See, that would, that would, that would disturb me. All these so-called veteran law enforcement officers, they, they come here with no statements. And that's how they tell them lies. You, you get rid of all the other video of their statement, you come in and say what you want to say. Mr. Hood, my question is, how do you plan, do you, are you going to be asking that that didn't move into evidence? That's what I'm trying no, to figure no, out. No, what I was going to do is ask him a question on it, and I was going to give him a chance to be honest about it. Now, I was <laughs> going to just straight up put it in the evidence because there's a lot of stuff on here that I don't think people should see at this time. It just, I'm talking about this officer being parked in the road. See, it's been going on for years. Definitely have told this man's family he was just sitting in the road. I just shot him so that don't reach me. So I'm sorry. See, that's, that's what I'm here for. And I'm irritated by it. And every time I see one of them, want to tell one of these little white lies or ugly lies, whatever they call them. Thankfully, I would object to that characterization. Here's, here's where we're going. I didn't want to say that much. No, no. That's not, that's not what I'm telling you. I'm just saying that if you start referring to it as a statement, as a victim statement, then I in know. a likelihood it's going to need to come out as to what that's about. I did get off of it. Does that make sense to yeah, you? Yeah, I do understand. And I'm I not telling you you can't do it. I, just, I, I, I didn't know that, uh, I didn't know where you were going as far as getting that into evidence. That's all. I ain't no problem. I just, don't worry about it. All right. Okay. Um, we'll bring it back in.